Two women found dead, their bodies dumped along a canal near Metro Center in the early 1990s. Both were stabbed while riding their bikes. 20 years after the crime, a DNA match led police to Brian Patrick Miller. Prosecutors sifted over the evidence and called for the death penalty. And today, 30 years after the crime, justice for the families of Angela Brasso and Melanie Burns. In 1992, it was considered safe to walk the streets of Phoenix, Arizona alone. 22-year-old Angela Brasso enjoyed cycling and often did so with her boyfriend. On November 2nd, Brasso went for a ride along the canal and never returned. On the following day, her body was found headless and naked in the canal. Her head wasn't found until 11 days later. It was concluded by its condition that it had been kept in a refrigerator. The autopsy revealed that Brasso had been violated and stabbed in the back. Almost a year had passed since the tragedy when 17-year-old Melanie Burness went for a bike ride and did not return home that night. Her body was found beneath an underpass near the same location where Brasso's body had been found. She had been stabbed so many times that the exact number could not be determined and had been dressed in a teal bodysuit that her mother said she didn't believe her daughter owned. The cases went cold until 2015 when breakthroughs in forensics found a DNA match. Brian Miller, who had previously attacked a woman with a knife, was linked to both cases. Hello, Detective Shiver, how are you? You want a water or soda or anything? Uh, water would be great. Just regular water? You sure you don't want to coke? No. <laughs> Had way too much caffeine today, so. Do you need the restroom or anything? I uh, do need a restroom, but I can. Are you good right now? Do you I want to go I now? I think I can hold off. Okay, just let me know if you need to go. I'm more concerned with what's going on. Yeah. They wouldn't tell me anything in the car. They just asked about my vehicle and so anytime you're brought into a police station, there your name came up in an investigation, so we have to bring you down to chat with you about it. But anytime we're brought in here, I gotta do the old standard, you know, read you your rights. So just the land of the law. So So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you. In a court of law, you have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed to you prior to questioning. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Well, before we talk about a lot of stuff, I just, what's your background? Where are you from? Um, I'm from, well, grew up in Hawaii. Grew up in Hawaii? Yeah. Were you born in Hawaii? Born in Michigan, but I was only there for maybe a week. So you're not a Michigan Blue fan? No. Uh, not in the sports at all. So you grew up in Hawaii after being born in Michigan? Yeah. Uh, How long did you live there? About 10 years. About 10 years? Yeah. So then you'd been about 10, then where did you move? Uh, here, here to Phoenix. Okay. Uh, came out for summer vacation. Uh, my grandmother lived out here at the time, and my mom came out the following year. Do you know what part of the town your grandma lived in? Uh, she, well, she was North Phoenix, uh, and then she moved to Washington State. And uh, but it was, was it 35th, uh, right around 35th in Olive. In Olive? Yes. So down by Olive. That's right. And so about 10 years old, you come out here, you're living with grandma originally, yeah. and then mom came out? Yeah. Miller had a toxic relationship with his mother, which many believed was the root cause of his violent fixations. Is there a reason you came out to live with grandma? Or? I never got a reason why. Uh, I think it was mostly financial. Um, what were your folks doing? Uh, my mom was... Uh, Time that I remember, she was security at a grocery store in Hawaii. Yeah. What island were you on? Uh, Oahu. Oahu. Do you guys live in the main, like Waikiki or? Uh, in Kaneohe. I can't spell that. Uh, yeah. Kaneohe is the area where they filmed a lot of uh, Pirates of 
Caribbean. So 10 years old, you're what, fourth grade, fourth grade-ish? Um, um, just going in the fifth. Now, was your dad around? Uh, no, he passed away in 1977. Sorry to hear that. Um, he's the reason why we were in Hawaii, because he was Army. What did he do in the Army? Um, let's see, he started at Fort Knox, and then... Uh, I don't know a lot about my dad. You don't know what he did? Um, I know he was Special Forces, um, but that's all I know. So he passed away in 87, is that what you said? 77. 77. Yeah. So you were five ish? Yeah. You were born in 72, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Mom, you guys stay there for at least a few years, five years. Mom sends you out here for a year, and then you live with Grandma. What was Grandma's name? Uh, Leela James. That was Grandpa around, or uh, he passed away before you came out here. Or? No, it was after eighties, late eighties, early nineties. What was his name? Um, David James. David James. So while you were out here with Grandma and Grandpa, did you get along with them very well, or I got along with him great. Um, what about Grandma? Uh, for the most part, you know, she was probably at the time my best friend, um, her and my aunt. Um, see, when I moved there, it was my grandmother and my grandfather, even though they were divorced. Um, he was in no shape to live on his own, so they had him still living on the same roof. And it was uh, my aunt and her husband at the time. And my aunt's name was, uh, at the time, Barb Hamill. It's now Barb James, uh, and her husband was Gordon Hamill. And how did you get along with them? Um, got along with them great. My uncle um, was really <clears throat> tough. Um, I got picked on a lot, so he tried teaching me uh, Tang Sudo. It's like martial arts, but. One of the many yeah. forms of jiu-jitsu yeah. and karate. We did that for a little while, and then he just kind of dropped it. Um, did you like it at all? Or? Uh, I mean, what kid doesn't like you learning any, stuff like you that? you remember any cool moves that you learned? No. No? Um, it was, he was trying to teach me to defend myself, but it was like, you know, I'd rather just walk away. Now, what, what made the kids pick on you in school? Um, well, in Hawaii, they picked on me because I was white. Uh, Howie? Yeah, Howie. And here, it was because I was different. Um, I wasn't like the other kids because you know, I raised in a different environment. I kept to myself. Um, didn't like sports. Um, but so what were, what were you into as a, a smaller kid? Um, I liked bicycles for a while. Well, I still do. Um, I collect them more than anything. But what kind of bikes? Um, I used to have like old Schwinn's. Um, I had uh, I had the West Coast Choppers bike for a little while, and the Orange County Chopper Huffy, or not Huffy, but um Schwinn. Um, anything that different stands out. You know, I had the big balloon tire bike for a while. With the, you thought it was like the beach, well, quasi beach colors yeah. or something similar to um, that. So it's just the ones that stand out. What know. about the BMX stuff? Uh, I had a BMX bike when I was a kid. That was my first bike. And the detective is curious about Miller's interest in bicycles, since the bicycles of both victims were missing after they were murdered. Something about the bikes may have been some sort of trigger for Miller, since those were the only thing the two girls had in common. So, Beachcombers and just yeah, chopper I, I, type bikes. I do you have uh, a mountain bike that I use in the trails by my house every once in a while. But what kind of mountain bike? Uh, mongoose. Mongoose. Yeah. So it like got the cool forks on it and stuff. And it's got suspension forks, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, but it's basic. 
21 speed or yeah, something like that. I, 18, 21. I haven't or, ridden in a while. In a while. How, how long do you have that bike? I still have it. No, I know, but do you get it uh, when you're I, a little bit older or as an adult? I've had it for <clears throat> three years. Three years. So how long did you ride like the chopper type bikes? Maybe a year. Mm -hmm. They're awkward. To the beachcombers? Yeah, I ended up selling them. Um, I had this year I sold, well, not this year, last year, I sold two of my cruisers. I had a 1903 felt, it's kind of like an old Harley. Um, but, um, yeah. So, so what, what trails around your house were you riding? Trail 100. Okay, that's something like North Mountain Park kind of? Yeah. I, I take it from 7th Street. You know, they've got the, uh, the visitor the center plan. park area okay. right across from the point. And then I ride it over to um, where the Sunny Slope School and uh, the police uh, department is, mm -hmm. and then ride back. So do you ride frequently, or where are you at the time? Or I haven't ridden my bike since maybe six months ago. Kind of goes in phases? Yeah. What about when you were younger? Is that how you got around? Or? Yeah, that's how I got around until I got a car. When did you get a car? Um, shoot. I uh, had a roommate at the time. He would loan me his car for a while, and then I bought um, an answer at the church, uh, and then someone that was selling the car, and I bought that. Was when, what, what church? Um, Perry's Valley, uh, Mennonite. Mennonite? Now you still belong to that, or is that back then? Or? Uh, my daughter goes to it. You know, I I don't go to it anymore because I well, I work Sundays. And now were you raised as a Mennonite, or no? Um, I started going there like early nineties. To, um, to the Mennonite church? Then? Yeah. What were you before that? Or uh, you my mom. Um, were you raised in a certain religion? I guess if I was raised in any religion, it was Mormon. Mormon. But uh, my mom, that was her thing. And when I moved in with my grandmother, I, you know, didn't really stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the grandma and grandpa yeah. weren't churchgoers? No, they, they weren't. Were. Um, they were religious, but not churchgoing. Just kind of their own beliefs or at the home? Yeah. Um, my, I did find out my grandmother, when she was a kid, had been with the Mennonite Church for a while, but Otherwise, you know, family's been religious, but not, you know, like regular churchgoers. Um, although my mom, before she passed away just a couple of years ago, um, cancer, she was going to uh, like a non-denominational church with her husband. Sorry, sorry to hear that. Yeah, so when you were a kid, you're roughly fifth grade coming out to Phoenix. Where did you go to school? Do um, you remember? Um, there was one near where my grandmother lived. Um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Remember. But then so. uh, um, when you know, my mom got her own place, it was about Union Hills and 35th. Did you go to Park Meadows then? Or? Uh, Sunrise or some, Sunset yeah. or something like that. And then I went to Desert Sky Junior High and Barry Goldwater High School. Um, Got my GED. Uh, first job was Burger King, you know, and then Smitty's, and same as Paul. Uh, got married, went to Washington State. Uh, came back to Phoenix, divorced, went back to work for same as Paul. Um, uh, and then you now I work at Amazon. I have a daughter who's at home right now. I um, have her uh, full custody. Does she see mom at all? Or? Uh, maybe like once or twice a year. Anxiety is causing Miller to overshare. By trying to appear helpful, he may reveal more than he should. Here's a quick reminder that I have a Patreon page with a ton of exclusive and ad-free content, like this one about a predator that was exposed live on TV. 
His interrogation is definitely something you'd want to watch. And you can do that right now at patreon.com backslash stranger stories plus. And something between those two or just the divorce in general? Uh, it was the divorce. Um, I filed for divorce after uh, my wife was cheating on me. And um, I requested joint custody. Miller leaves out the important information that he was in jail at the time of the separation and that his wife feared him. While in jail, he wrote her explicit letters about the things he wanted to do to her. And, well, my wife kept, well, ex-wife kept having CPS called on her and a few issues came up and she was, and she was trying to get custody of my daughter so they could uh, move, and the judge ruled that I got full custody. So did your daughter get along with mom? Or? Um, yeah, you know, it took her a while to get over the feelings, but um, the main pull for her to go there is she's got three half siblings, you know, half brother, half sister. And, uh, and where, where's mom? Her mom went roughly. I mean, in the valley yeah, somewhere. Somewhere here in the valley. Um, so when she goes, when your daughter goes out there, that she her mom, mom come, and they her mom comes pick her, picks her up at the house. So you try not to have much contact with. Yeah. I, you know, because of everything she put it through, <clears throat> right. it's the one person on, on face of the earth that I could probably honestly say I hate. Um, so. Well, and daughter's old enough to call her and say whatever. So you, well, you don't when know. she gets bored, she texts her and it's like, all right, you know, just me. don't tell me about it. You don't have to chit chat with her because yeah. she's old enough to kind of communicate with her. Yeah. So when you you lived here with grandma and then mom moved out here, you guys all lived at the house there for how long before you guys moved to Union Hills area? Um, we were probably in the house with my grandmother for maybe a year, year and a half. Um, and were, was your aunt and her husband, still, was everybody still in there yeah, at the time? Yeah, they, they were all together until shortly after I moved out, and then my aunt got a divorce. So then it was just my grandmother and my aunt. And then my aunt moved to Washington State um, near Portland, uh, Tillamook. And, Jeez, please. Yeah. And things didn't go well there, so she moved to Portland. And then she convinced my grandmother to move up there. So I helped my grandmother move up there. And then they convinced my mom to move up there. And then they convinced me to move up there. It's like, all right, you know. But that was later on? Yeah. Miller hasn't mentioned the true cause for him to move away from the area. But after looking at his records, the detective knows just what questions to ask to get to the information he wants. But as a kid, you, you stayed out here with mom pretty much? Yeah, I stayed out here with, with mom and... Uh, you know, um, how, how was your childhood growing up with all that going on? Uh, with me and my mom, horrible. What what made it horrible? Um, physical abuse. When you say physical abuse, because that's kind of a vague. Um, term. being beaten. Uh, didn't matter if I did something or she did something and forgot she did it. I would get a beating for it if I showed. What kind of beating? Um, belt, but she used her security belt, so it was like a law enforcement belt, and usually I hit, I hit by the buckles. So how long did that, was that starting when you were like and 10 or 11 ish? It started or? when I was five, okay. right after. Right after dad died? In, like the week after. And uh, it went on for 10 years, and it stopped. One day she uh, went to her room to get the belt, came out with it. And I was sitting in the hallway, and uh, as soon as I saw her with the belt, I kicked my foot through the wall, and uh, I said, you're not hitting me anymore. And she turned around, put the belt away, and just left me alone. You're about 15? Yeah. So you're about the same size or bigger than her by then? Uh, well, I, was, I was probably a little taller, but I was scrawny. 
What did she have a security belt for? Oh, she did security. Um, she did um, before, shortly before um, she was, before she left Hawaii, um, she was trying to become Honolulu PD and didn't make the cut. Um, when she came here, um, she did security work, bodyguard work, and then she worked for MTSO, um, uh, detention officer. Uh, so she worked Durango um, and uh, Madison Street. Okay. So when when she would beat you with that belt, and you said a lot of times the buckle would hit you, was it where was she striking you at? Um, arms, legs, torso. Did it leave welts or bruises? When you went to school, did anybody ever see it? Or um, I would go to school, long sleeves, pants. Nurse would call me, call me in one day, and she saw all the welts. They did nothing about it. What school was that at? Um, now it's at the elementary. And uh, yeah. So did you harbor a resentment to your mom for all that? or? Um, I did for a good while. You know, but obviously, you know, I, I tried to make things as best you know, as you could. Yeah. Um, when I moved to Washington, we actually moved in with my mom, and uh, for the most part, that was that worked out. Well, you were a little bit older. How old were you then? Um, twenty-five. So from like after you're fifteen. And prior to that, did mom have a boyfriend that stayed around the house at all? Or? No. She dated, but didn't live with anyone. Um, she'd have roommates occasionally, um, but they were female roommates. Now, was grandma around at any of this time when you were getting the beatings, or she already? She knew all about it. She'd witnessed it before. And uh, they always told me, called Child Protective Services and called cops. Problem is, you know, back then, call the cops and they find out that the mom's sheriff's office done uh -huh. deal. I'm sorry to hear that. So, during those time periods, did you ever have to go to counseling or anything like that? Did uh, you ever lash out as you got older? Um, yeah, I, I lashed out. I got in trouble. Um, what kind of things you get in trouble for? Um, Choplifting, um, uh, criminal damage. Um, I did assault someone in my teen years, uh, the juvie. Um, what happened there? Um, it was kind of blacked out. And, you know. The woman Miller stabbed in the back was Celeste Bentley, a complete stranger who was walking through a mall parking lot. At first, she only believed she had been hit and it wasn't until she felt blood that she realized what had happened. Later, doctors told her she was lucky to have survived the attack. Hurt someone, and uh, someone noticed uh, later that the person looked a lot like my mom. And uh, When you say someone, is that like a counselor? Or? No, it was just a random person. And uh, someone I'd never met before, and... Uh, but, um, what happened in that assault, or how did it happen? It's something I really don't like thinking about, just because it's, it's totally not me. Um, you know, I, I hit him in the back. Um, but I'd really not like to talk any more about that. Yeah. Okay, so was that, I think that was just from the, the times that your mom and grandma, you know, put you through all that torment that it just kind of well, led my you to something like my that? My grandmother didn't really put me through torment, but my, my mom did. And uh, Well, she led your mom to it. Well, she was aware of yeah, it. Yeah, she did, but I, I never held any resentment. I, uh, I ended up forgiving my mom. I think maybe 
ten years ago. Get forgiven for what? For doing the beatings? Yeah. Yeah. After that event, did you go to uh, did like count. kid jail or anything like that? Or yeah, um, you know, got detained for you know a little while. Um, was released uh, while I was seventeen. And I uh, went to, you know, they said, as long as you don't move back home to, with your mom while you're juvenile, you know, you know everything's fine. Um, and I went to a halfway house. And uh, from there, you know, they helped me, you know, get my first job at Burger King. And, uh, and then... Turned 18, needed a place to go, and that's when I called, you know, people from the church that I had met, and uh, I had a place to stay. Um, I so when you turned 18, what you couldn't go back to mom's or didn't want to. Um, you know, I probably could have, but it's like I wanted good things, <laughs> you know, not. Something that's just, you know, I didn't want to live in fear. So, when you were in the halfway house or detained, did you ever seek any counseling or did you have any mental health people that you had to talk to? Uh, while I was detained, um, they had me speak to counselors and then, you know, maybe for a few, I can't remember how many months, you know, we would have counseling and then we stopped, um, right, you know right before my release. And, uh, Miller was diagnosed with a dissociative disorder and sexual sadism. The only counseling I've had since then is I've had couples counseling. Did they diagnose you with any, like, issues? Back then, you didn't have to, like, go to take any medications or anything uh, like that? Yeah, you know, they tried putting me on, like, antidepressants for a while. Um, was that while you were in the treatment home, or was that yeah. after? Yeah, and... Um, it just had weird side effects that we stopped, you know, they, um, you know, I, right now I struggle with depression, um, but it goes, you know, it's untreated, um, it's mostly, uh, like loneliness, even though I live with my daughter, um, you know, since being divorced and all that. Do you or your daughter get along pretty well? Or? Yeah, we get along really well. Have you a good relationship? Yeah. Now, when you were in the halfway house, did, you know, some psychologists or psychiatrists or counselors give you the ways to release your feelings? Did they have you write stuff down or anything like that? Um, drawing, writing, you know. And One note listed things he hoped to do to girls, and it disturbed his mother enough that she turned it in to the police. Another note with a drawing of a heart was found at the time of his arrest. He used to draw a lot. Um, I don't write. Um, what kind of drawings were they? Uh, I used to draw like cartoons, um, just characters, nothing uh, specifically like dogs, silly dogs. Um, really liked cars, so I draw cards. Was terrible at things like landscapes, people. So, did they ever have you write about your feelings or anything like that? Um, they would have me draw out my feelings. You know, like if I was feeling uh, sad, draw something that expresses the emotion, and it would be like a cloud of tears. You know, um, but no, it was nothing. Nothing like really memorable that I, you know, would. Did you have girlfriends when you were younger? Uh, prior to the marriage? Or? Nothing serious, just like, you know, high school girlfriends. Um, stayed single up until I got married. How old were you when you got married? Um, 24, 25. Um, we dated for. Um, Half, something like that. Um, 
for her uh, you know, dated another girl for about a year. I don't have a lot of relationships. It's just uh, and yeah, I think yourself, or well, for the most part, you know, I do have some social groups that uh, I've been hanging out with, you know, the last six, seven years. Well, right, right before about the time you got out of Adobe, couldn't go stay with mom. Do you remember writing anything like this? Obviously, no. That does look like my handwriting. Looks like your handwriting? Oh, it did surprise you if I told you that your mom brought this to the police department back about that time frame? I wouldn't be surprised if it was something I did. Well, does this, why would you write something like that? Honestly, I don't know. Could be anger issues just about women in general because of what you went through with your mom, or? Well, you know. Miller is uncomfortable with the line of questioning. It is hitting too close to the murders he has managed to conceal for decades. From a movie? Yeah. What kind of movie is, are you watching? Well, my mom used to like horror movies. So, you wouldn't ever act out on something like that? No. That's, that's written in there? Uh, did, <clears throat> as you were, like, in your early teens and the, even 19, 20 years old, what, what did you do for entertainment or hanging oh. out or... Um, when I wasn't working, it would probably be movies. Um, Where would you go to the movies at? Uh, um, see, at the time, it would have probably been Greenway Parkway and 7th Street. There used to be a movie theater where the uh, Target is. Okay. Kind of like that. Third Street, Seventh Street, this area. Yeah, I think the Target's still over there. Or uh -huh. It is now. I'm trying to remember what's taking its spot right now. Um, yeah, because my um, after Smitty's, uh, which was the one right next to where my house is, Seventh uh, Street and Hatcher. Hatcher. Um, from there. Um, I worked for uh, James Miller uh, from the church, and he, he did masonry. It's Jim Miller and Sons Masonry, or something like that. Construction or something. And uh, uh, there, probably. Third uh, and Greenway Parkway. Um, his father-in-law had a property that I would do uh, work work at. You know, um, they do like wrought iron gates, with the redwood, and I would treat the wood and cut it and fit it into gates, uh, and then help with installs. Um, worked with his sons, and when we had free time, we'd go to movies. So when you were in your bike phase, is it all, did you ever ride the bikes around Metro Center? Did you ever go to, where, where was the Burger King you worked at? Uh, the Burger King I worked at was way out west. How'd you get back and forth? Well, that was when I was at the halfway house. Oh, okay. Where was that at? Um, uh, 
like 51st and Thunderbird or Cactus. So did you ever cruise around Metro at all? You know, golf and stuff or castles and uh, coasters? My grandmother used to work at Sperry Federal Trade Union. I'd go over there every once in a while. Where's that at? Well, it used to be on the north side of Uh, the north side of Metro Center Parkway. Okay. Like on the Peoria side or just Peoria south side, of the yeah. Peoria or like over by 31st or 28th, somewhere? Peoria there. and the Peoria and those, well, it's part of the uh, inner circle, but right. I take, um, take Peoria on over. Where were you living then? Um, sunny slope. So were you riding your bike or driving or? Um, uh, bike or drive. What kind of bike you have then? Um, might have been a mongoose still. How old were you then? Um, 18, 19. Um, lived in, I don't know, maybe well, I'd like to say a year. Well, yeah, about a year. Um, lived in an apartment. Um, with my current landlord, she has these, uh, like duplex apartments. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I lived there. And then behind me, we had like, a couple guys that did missionary work. Um, so they lived right behind me. Um, Jeez, that's a long time ago. Um, so to get to Metro Center, would you go Peoria or sometimes use the bike trails that kind of go by the canal? The canal is where Miller's victims were found, so he is unlikely to admit ever being in the area. I didn't like taking the trails along the canal. Um, yeah, I preferred Peoria. You know all those little bike paths they have around they go north of the canal, up like to, what is it, Peoria, Cactus, Thunderbird, up into the Sweetwater. You, ever take the, you know those aqueducts they have that kind of run north to south? Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Over by the canals are over there. Yeah, because it follows the Salt River Project. Yeah, those aqueducts. Yeah. You know where the tunnel is that goes under the canal There's... or goes under the freeway into, like, right by Gulf. Castles and coasters, I think, is what they call it now. Um, you know which bike trails I'm talking about? I know which ones you're talking about. Did you frequent those at all no. for anything? Stay away from those. Did you ever go under that under the bridge? Those always or? scared me. That's why I didn't take them. Had you taken them? I may have taken them once and then didn't like it. You know which ones I'm talking about? Right there by the canal, though, where the water is. Because you have the canal that runs like behind. Metro Center over there, right by Castles and Coasters, like north of Dunlap, oh. right before Castles and Coasters. So if you're driving up I-17, you know the canal that you pass, like right after Dunlap, if you're going north and or south. Yeah. The, and then there's a, there's a little like tunnel that goes under under the freeway there, so people can get from, obviously, from one side to the other. A lot of kids, you know, yeah, back and forth to go to Metro Center. You didn't hang out around that area at all? No. I mean, my hangouts were in the Sunny Slope area. Never had any confrontations with anybody in those areas? I avoid confrontation. Now, back to with your girlfriends before you got married. Were you sexually active with them? I uh, was not sexually active until I got married. Well, we were sexually active before marriage, but yeah. Now, did you ever have sex with anybody else before her then, or? Um, became a prostitute when I was 18, uh, Mexican girl. Do you ever have any, what I'll call a weenie wagger episodes where you maybe masturbated out in public? No. So if you masturbated, I mean, your DNA wouldn't be anywhere out in the public just floating around. Not likely. Um, 
Miller's answer isn't as firm as it should be, as if he is giving himself room to backpedal. Probably masturbated outside a couple times, but it's not like a regular. Where would that happen at? Never around those bike paths, so. No. Or the canal. Not that I. Well, I think you would remember something like that, but. Well, you would think. Um, there's some things that I've done with friends, and they, you remember that? And no. And you ever have any sex with any women out on the bike trails or anything? No. Never met any girls out there? I wish I could have met yeah, someone that riding, you know? Again, Miller avoids giving a straight answer. He does not outright deny meeting any women on the trails. So there's no, no reason that your DNA should be anywhere around out there. Never had sex with any women, anything like that. No. So you ever been accused of any sexual assaults? No. Have you ever done any sexual no. assaults? Other than the time that you stabbed that person that you don't really want to talk about. Yeah. You ever stab anybody else? No. Never had sex with anybody, never stabbed anybody after that time no. when you were, what, how old were you when that first one happened? About 15. About 15 when that, when that, when that lady got hurt? Yes. And you had no idea who this lady was? I had no clue, never met her before. So other than the prostitute and your, what's your ex-wife's name? Uh, Amy. Amy? Yes. She's the only person you've had sex with? Uh, had, well, up until then, yeah. And you were 24, 25 then? Yeah. So in, say around 91, 92, what part of Phoenix were you living in? Um, Bethany Home, probably. Bethany Home and... Uh, 815 East Bethany Home. Is that a house, apartment? Apartment. That's my old roommate still lives there, Randy McGlade. Randy McGlade? Yeah. How do you spell it? R-A-N-D-Y-M-C-G-L-A-D-E. How old's Randy? Um, mid to late 50s. And you were friends with him back then? I've known him since. Maybe even eight, yeah, maybe even eighteen. We worked together at Santa's Hall. Which one? Um, four twenty West Watkins. And how long ago was that? Did you work there and then stop and then come uh, back? Or? I worked there for seven years. Um, got married, left, worked for them again in Washington State, and then um. Worked for them again about three years ago. Did security. What kind of security work? Uh, the main dining room down the street. Okay, so you're living at 815 East Bethany back in that time frame. Yeah. How long did you live there? Until we got married. What um, year did you get married, though? I know you can figure it out. It's probably not a happy time now, but. Um, so roughly 92, you would have been 20. Um, 97, 98. 97, 98, you got married? I'm sorry, my brain is just trying to absorb all this and well, figure that, that's things fine. out. Do you, um, <clears throat> You live with Randy, and I know earlier you were talking about you usually rode your bike. So how old were you when you got your own car? Was that with Randy helping you? Uh, I was. I think I was living. No, I wasn't living with him yet. It was right before. Um, right before I moved in with him. Um, I had the car. 
maybe had it for a couple months before someone I knew stole it. And uh, that was before you lived with, do you remember when about 91 you moved in with him? Like think of a holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, spring break. I moved in with him before my lease was up to my old apartment. Um, Where was the old apartment at? Nice little, um, on Townley. Townley? How long did you live there? Um, well, I had the lease for one year and probably moved in there, you know, moved out of there unofficially after six months. And rather than pay, you know, the penalty for leaving lease early, I just kept paying a monthly payment, you know, and uh, until my lease was up, and then uh, then started helping out with my rent where I was at, you know, with, with Randy. How long did you stay with him? You said until you were married? Yeah. Each location where Miller has lived will be checked to see if any similar cases have happened in the area. As it will turn out, there are several that could be attributed to him. So you think that was 91 and... Late 90, early 91, mid 91. So 72 to 92 is 20, plus 4 is 96, you would have been 24. So you think you got married 24, 25, so 96 yeah. to 97. So you were with Randy from 91, roughly, until 96 or 97. Yeah. And when you first moved in with him, you still had a bike? Uh, yeah, I've had various bikes. Um, Mongoose. Would that have been a, your kind of major mode of transportation? Yeah. Did Randy let you use his car once in a while, or did you guys carpool to and from work? Or? Uh, we carpooled uh, to and from work once in a while. Um, he usually started later than me. Um, so sometimes I would take his car to work and he would ride his bike down and then we'd carpool back. What kind of bikes did he have? Um, Huffy, um, Mango, you know. Did, does, do you think Randy disliked women at all or he just was never into them? As soon as he is given an opportunity, Miller tries to point the detective toward someone else. The only problem is that, unlike Miller, his friend is not a DNA match. I think he was afraid of him. Um, he's, you know, like me, he was a little different. Um, really shy. Um, he really keeps to himself. Um, the only people he hangs out with or uh, a couple people he works with. Um, usually when he hangs up with them, you know, I'm invited along as well, um, still even to this day. Now are you guys still friends now? Do you guys hang out yeah. together still? Yeah. Now, during your times of turmoil in your younger years, did you ever dress in women's clothing or anything like that? No. Do you ever like wear women's body suits or bathing suits or no. nothing like that? No. So you didn't have any of those types of feelings or cross dressing no. feelings? <laughs> so would you say with your your wife at the time, um, your sexual relation was normal? Yeah. Normal. Um you know. First time we had sex was in my room. It was Randy. Um, I don't even know if he knew it was happening. But, you know. And you guys dated for about a year and a half before you got married? Yeah. So probably like a 94-ish maybe. Yeah, 94, 95. It was, um, we started dating before Thanksgiving one year. Um, 
you'd think you'd remember something like your anniversaries, but you know. Depends on who they're with. Um, yeah. Um, and then, it was, no, we started dating in August. Um, and then, um, it was probably a few months after that we had sex for the first time. And, uh, um, Awkward. Um, what does sex with her have to do with any of it? Well, you've lived here off and on since you were. Ten years old, roughly, and that would have been in seventy-seven. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, seventy. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. So from eighty-two until ninety something, you you were married to Amy, correct? Is that her name? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was married to her in the you know, mid nineties. And then you guys lived in Phoenix. Uh, we lived in Phoenix. Um, in a little apartment just north of where I was already living. Uh, and where was just, that? Um, just north of Bethany Home. Um, um, north of Bethany Home, there's a Jack in the Box on 7th. If you go, it's the road that that's on. Um, just north of that road, maybe about 10th Street. So, 91 as you move in with Randy, till about 96, 97 when you get married. Then you live with Amy for a little bit. Yeah. Then you said she's from Washington. What year did you go to Washington? No, she wasn't from Washington. Oh, I'm sorry. I mistook that. Uh, but you guys moved to Washington. Yeah, we moved to Washington. Um, it was... Probably almost exactly one year after we got married. So from 91 till 98, you were in Phoenix. Yeah. Well, yeah, about 98. But 91, 92, 93, yeah, 94, you were in Phoenix. You're, in Phoenix. Yeah. you're living around the area of, you know, H Street and Bethany Home. You worked at St. Vincent de Paul then? Yes. And then when did you go to Smitty's or was Smitty's before? Smitty's was right before St. Vincent de Paul. So roughly, when you're living with Randy when you're at St. Vincent de Paul. Yeah. And then 91. Were you there, though, St. Vincent's the whole time you lived with Randy? Uh, yes. Yeah. And what kind of car did Randy have? Um, he had a Hyundai and an Escort. So in in that early '90s area, you were in the Phoenix area. Mm -hmm. You lived in the, in the in there. And do uh, you remember hearing any news articles about any ladies being killed? Probably saw a few. Do you remember any specific ones? And you told me that around the Metro Center area on the bike paths, on the canals, you weren't ever around there. Maybe, maybe once in a while. Yeah, once in a while, not like a regular thing. You remember the name Angela Brasso at all? No. Well, she was killed around the bike pass in 1992. And then in 1993, there's a girl by the name of Melanie Burns who was also killed around the bike, you know, the canals and the bike pass over there. And there's some DNA evidence that kind of links you to those girls. Is there any way you can explain that to me? I don't know those names. Well, any girl in particular, whether you remember their name or not, how would your DNA evidence be linked to them? I have no clue. You have no clue about no. 
two girls that were killed and your DNA being linked to their bodies. And those letters that you wrote when you were younger that your mom gave us, you kind of recognize those as being your handwriting. Very similar characteristics in those letters to, to what happened to these young ladies. And now years later, we have DNA that links you to those two ladies. Well, how else would your you know you know what DNA is? Yeah, right? I, I know what DNA is. Okay, what what is DNA to you? Where does it come from? DNA could be in semen, blood, saliva. It makes up our you know it's our ID. It's our tells our body you know what hair color we have, what eye color we have. And do you know the numbers on DNA, like what your specific DNA is to how many gazillions of people and it can only be you? It's in the trillions. So what I'm telling you is your DNA is linked to both these women who were killed. So I'm just curious if you only had sex with the prostitute and only had sex with your wife, were never around the area around Metro Center where these ladies were found. One was up by her apartments on Cactus. And one was by the canal. How, how can you explain to me that your DNA is there? Yeah. I can't remember everything I did back then, but I know I didn't kill anyone. Well, I would think that you would remember if you did something like that. Yeah, I would. So are you sure you don't want to... You know, now's your chance to kind of come and tell me, is there a reason something like that happened? I mean, it would help you get it off your chest if you did something like that. I didn't kill anyone. You didn't kill anybody? No. But yet you can't explain to me how your DNA is there. It was embarrassing mentioning mentioning the, the prostitute because you know I I valued at, at the time I valued sex. You know, sex was you don't have it until you're married. Um, but you know, I did for about a year frequent Van Buren and Canada. How'd you get there? Car. You sure you didn't have sex with these women and maybe something went awry after that happened? No. Well, I'm telling you. There's only one way your DNA could have got there, and that's by you ejaculating on them. So, you're a grown man, I'm a grown man. Explain to me, I've been doing this for a long time. Unless there's someone I had sex with, it's impossible. But you already told me you never had sex with those people or anybody on the bike pass. Paul, the, the only time I've had sex on a bike that was with my wife in Washington. But on the bike pass here in Phoenix, no. It's always been in the car or in the bedroom. Okay, so say that you had sex with one of these women somewhere else and then brought them back to the bike pass. That didn't happen either. So how are you going to explain to anybody, me included, 
that your DNA is on both these women. And nothing for that. They both are deceased. Everyone, as far as I know, everyone that I've ever had sex with is still alive. Miller's answers are muted, and he isn't trying very hard to protest his innocence. He doesn't show any shock, almost as if all of this is expected. So you've never killed anybody? Nobody. But your DNA is on these dead girls. How did he get there? I don't know. Well, I think you do know. I think you just have to be honest with yourself and come forward with what happened back. I know you had a lot of anger issues with your mom and your grandma and stuff growing up. Yeah, me and my mom dealt with that. Yeah, but that was later. No, we had started it before I got married. Well, I'm going to let you sit here and think about it for a few minutes. Do well, you need to use the restroom at all? I do need to use the restroom. Okay, give me just a minute, all right? I got to get a key to undo your little brace, let's say. And I need someone to call Randy so he can notify my daughter. Okay, we'll take care of that a little bit. Did not fucking kill anyone. Yeah. Nobody. You go to the bathroom, man? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do that real quick. We're going to leave these off, so you got to be nice, okay? I'll be nice. All right. this officer. We'll go right to the bathroom. We'll be back right in here, okay? Kind of surprised to us. Probably like two years ago. Um, talk to somebody. Is that good? Yeah. You want to change some other way? No, that's good. Okay. Let me lock it so it doesn't look tighten up on you. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Awesome. Okay. I don't want cutting off circulation or anything like that, okay? Just hold tight. All right, you got back with you. How old are you now? Obviously, I'm, you know, got some curiosity factors going on. You told me earlier that, you know, you are not the one who you've ever killed anybody. Have you ever been with anyone when someone was killed? Has Randy ever killed anybody? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of. Do you know if Randy rode around the bike trails on his bike at all over there? The only time I ever saw him ride was when he would ride with me. So you you were never with Randy when he attacked women and killed them or did anything like that? No, and I couldn't see him. Doesn't seem like that type of guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, earlier when I talked to you initially about uh, when you were young, you are 15 years old, and, you know, you had that assault, and you really didn't want to talk about it. You kind of mentioned that you blacked out. What, what did you mean by that? Um, the moment I struck, struck her, I was blacked out. I was like... Kind of just, you know, they explained it to me that it was like separating myself from something that goes against what, your, your core beliefs. Yeah. Now, just be devil's advocate here, later on in, you know, this time frame where these women, you know, they were attacked. Is it possible that you could have blacked out and done something like that to somebody and not recalled? No, because I knew I had done something when that happened. 
I used to remember her name, but I've taken it out of your memory yeah. bank. So you don't think there's any way that you're on the canal banks and these women come by and you black out and attack no. them and then have your way with them? No. What do you think should be done to somebody that does kill somebody? Depends on the reasonings for doing it. So you think there's a reason to kill somebody? In rare occasions. Explain self explain that to me. Self defense. Okay, that would work. Yeah. You know, self defense in war. Otherwise, you know, there's. So if you you have a a young lady riding around on her bicycle, you know, trying to get her nice exercise in, enjoying herself a little bit, you know, it's maybe her escape from work, school, whatever it may be. They're riding around on the canal banks and or those bike trails and somebody attacks them and ends on, ends up killing them. What what do you think should happen to that person? No. Do you usually carry knives with you anywhere? No. I don't carry any weapons. What did you assault that first lady with? It was So that's technically a well. Weapon. Back then I did. I went to a school, you know, a state school mm -hmm. down on Central. Um, I don't think it's there anymore. It's right behind where the news channel is, right at the park. Central and how far down though? Yeah, well, you know where the deck park is. Okay, yeah. There used to be a school just east. Central. Central over there. Yeah. And, you know, after juvie, you know, in juvie, you get the gang types that threaten you and stuff like that while I was going to school. Right. And how, at, at what age was that? Um, <clears throat> I was 15. 15. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, we do a little bit of research on people when we try to talk to them. And you got a, a YouTube thing about you're in a church and it's Saint, Saint Maria Garetti. Do you know what she's the patron saint of or anything like that? Or why would you be in a church for her? I wasn't in a church for her. So maybe we got the wrong Brian Miller. The only church I go to is... You don't ever remember going in a church in St. Maria Garetti Church and filming anything? No. no. Oh, St. Maria Garetti. Yeah. That, that's, okay. Am I Blade. saying it too weird for you? Yeah, St. Maria Garetti. You say tomato, I say tomato. That's out in Scottsdale. So well, what was that? What's that about? Uh, Randy used to play the organ there. And he was um, practicing out there. And it was like stained, was like stained glass windows. And uh, um, stained, stained glass windows, there's a pipe organ in there, and the videos of him uh, at the organ practicing. Well, not really practicing, just playing around, because at the time he didn't, he wasn't the organist there, but he still has keys to get in, and he had permission by the organist to go in. So, and that was uh, the church that his parents went to. Do you know what St. Maria is the patron saint of? No. Rape victims. There isn't much that Miller can say to that. While it is most likely a coincidence, the detective will use anything to throw Miller off balance. No, it's just kind of, I mean, could it be coincidence? Who knows? That's, you know, we're cops. We look at things, that's what we, you know, that's what we do. Um, so, it, you know, you blacked out that one time, but you still were aware of what you were doing. So as far as yeah. you know, you never blacked out and knocked any women off their bikes and took advantage of them and ended up killing. I've never taken advantage of them. And you kind of talked about you were scared of, you know, going through the tunnels and, and being on the bike trails over there. Why would you be scared of that? Uh, dark, vulnerable, 
I have care of people. That's why, you know, if there's conflict, I leave conflict. I don't get in fights. Um, even if someone hits me, I don't hit back. And Randy, you said right before I walked out that, you know, you wanted me to call him to to go get your daughter or? Oh, my daughter's home alone. Okay. And she doesn't know where I'm at. I get home between 6.45 and 7 every day. Okay. Do you care you have any knives at home? There's kitchen knives. There might be like a, uh, like a fishing knife somewhere. Do you carry weapons other than knives at all? or I don't carry any weapons. Okay, no guns or anything like that? The no. only gun in the house is a replica of an 1800s gunpowder, you know, black powder gun. And um, I had two pistols that were my mom's, a shotgun and a rifle, um, but I sold those uh, a few months back. And then um, your nickname's The Duck. What, what's that come from? Uh, nickname that I got in grade school. Um, I used to make duck sounds, you know, you know. So you like Duck Dynasty then? No. No? Um, I, now, I, what, what language is that parenthesis means the duck? What is that? How do you say that? The Hodden Lucas. Hodden Lucas? Hodden Lucas is Welsh. Is Welsh. For Lucky Duck. For Lucky Duck, okay. So I, I could, I wouldn't have been able to pronounce that unless you told me how. Yeah. And then your your car, what's what's that all about? Uh, the car started um, a year ago. Um, I had bought, uh, so I came back to Phoenix, I had bought, I had a Ford Mustang four-cylinder. Um, needed a new car, so I had bought his wagon and that wagon. No, his wagon. Um, Randy's car. And it wasn't a wagon. It was the four door sedan that I have in my backyard right now. Um, it does. It needs some axles, so it doesn't drive. Um, but I had bought another car of his after that one broke down. Ford Focus uh, drove that for a while and didn't like it. And so, in the search for another car. Um, I just happened to pass that one while waiting for phone calls on another one. Uh, I was actually wanting a Ford Taurus SHO. So um, I passed that and I was like, yeah, well, I'll check them out. They had a couple of them there, two black and whites, and some uh, really beat, beat up crappy ones on 32nd and Greenway area and 32nd uh, Street, um, Chevy GNS Auto. And uh, Oh, all right, you know, don't mind the price, they look really good, and I've always wanted a Crown Vic, because when I was security, we drove a Crown Vic, and I liked it. So, um, bought it, and really liked it, and uh, joined local car club, you know, Crown Vic of Arizona, um, you know, basically Panther enthusiasts, you know, Panther chassis, you know. Um, and, you know, just fixing it up and stuff, and it's like, oh, I want to put the push bar back on it. So, found the guy on Craigslist that, you know, I've got a push bumper, you know, and all this other stuff. It's like, all right, you know, come for the push bumper. And he's like, well, why don't you do this to it? And it's like, well, I don't want to do that to it. And it's like, why not? Because, you know, he's talking about the lights and everything, and it's like, Uh, I had issues with the legality of it, and after months of going over it, you know, I finally bought the lights from them. They're all green and amber, um, and, you know, started with the interior lights, and, uh, and uh, 
started up as like a zombie car because you know I have friends that do the Arizona Corpse Crew uh, special events and stuff like that, Comic Con, and uh, for the Zombie Walk, uh, not this last, not 2014, but 2013, we put the Zombie Hunter on the back of the car and drove to the Zombie Walk. My daughter was all makeup and everything does. Um, <laughs> You know, a zombie, and I wore a gas mask, and I had a Nerf gun, and I think I wore a trench coat. And then, you know, if you've been cyber stalking me, you've seen the costume. Well, it's, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just giving you know, giving you something. Giving me shit. Okay. Um. And so you know, I, I dress up as this character, the zombie hunter, which started out as you know. A couple friends of mine wanted to do a diesel punk uh, airship, you know. Um, I don't know if you know what diesel punk or steampunk is. Um, oh. Well, so it's steampunk. Um, steampunk, think Wild Wild West. Okay. You know, especially the... Uh, Miller's main hobby is fantasy, and one would assume that he would scout for victims at conventions. Surprisingly, that hasn't been the case. The new the movie that they had out, um, and so that steampunk and diesel punk would be Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Um, one is steam gears, uh, copper brass, you know, Victorian and Edwardian period uh, of dress and whatnot. And diesel punk is more diesel power. Things a little sleeker, a little more military like. And uh, so it's like, all right, so I made this costume. And that kind of also tied in with the, you know, the car. Um, so we decided to just make a theme out of it. You know, we could use it for Comic Con. So I, I rushed last year to put it all together, uh, did motor work on the car, you know, took motor down to the block built it back up, um, camshaft, heads, you know, you name it, and, uh, and then we made up the, the logos put on the side, and uh, entered it in for their car show, and, you know, it's my daily driver, so, you know, a scooter that I have, you know, which hasn't worked in a couple months. Um, that's how that came to be. Um, you know, I had the partition in the back for a while, but it's like, you know, it just weighs the car down and, you know, when I'm at work, you know, I arrive to work early just to relax, you know, unwind from the drive and I put in the kind of seats I took it out. Um, you know. My friends that do the zombie thing, you know, they want to take rides in the back. You know, so we did that for a little while, you know, going to events, but you know, we don't do that anymore. Um, what what engine you have in there? It's the it's the stock 4.6. You know, it's just like any P71 cruiser that you may or may not have driven around in your career. Um, so all the internals are stock. You know, with the uh, 112 service miles plus you know the idle hours on it so it's maybe got 200,000 miles worth of use on it and then the heads cams those were replaced now did you learn mechanics on your own or did somebody teach you that or? uh I, I had to learn it all on my own um thank god for the internet right internet and my uncle was a race car driver and his younger years, you know, like Gordon Hamill, mm -hmm. um, and I used to watch him build cars, and I kind of have the car gene in my blood, you know, my grandmother worked for Ford, my uncle had raced in Trans Am series, the drag racing, and, you know, my aunt had worked for Toyota, and so I've always had an interest in cars. Um, my idol growing up was Richard Petty, um, and Big Daddy Ross, um, 
know, AJ Foyt. Right. Um, the Indianapolis guy. Yeah. Um, since then, there there hasn't been and anyone. And you said you don't like sports. Well, auto sports. If it has wheels, I like it. Um, so, uh, you know, motorcycles, bicycles, cars, airplanes once in a while, uh, mostly older airplanes. Um, but. Miller nervously rambles about his hobby, hoping it will distract the detective long enough for him to figure out the best way to get out of this situation. He has kept this a secret for decades, so it must seem impossible that he could be caught after all this time. The car's my passion. Uh, and, uh, you know, with steampunk, I'm a member of the Arizona Steampunk Society. Uh, we get together for group dinners at, you know, um, little naked events, you know, leatherworking, um, Nerf guns, you know, modifying the Nerf guns to look steampunk, you know, just painting, you know, plastic. So those are the weapons I have. They're plastic and cardboard. Okay, so you're not really a weapons man, per se? No. And you said other than, like, a fishing knife, did you fish, or is that... I fished when I used to be in the youth group church. You know, we'd go to a canyon, hike down, fish. That was our meal. Uh, is Richard a red religious guy? Other to say he played the organ at St. Maria. Randy. Randy, I'm sorry. Um, I would say he's religious, but he works at the church. He doesn't really go to church. No. Um, when he went to church, you know, it would have been St. Maria Goretti. Um, that was, you know, he used to play the organ there when, when he was a lot younger. Um, he's been... Where he's at now, um, you know, St. Marie Gritty. I'm trying to, yeah, St. Marie Gritty is one of Scott's, right? Yes, I believe so. Because, um, he works at a Lutheran church in Paris Valley right now. He hang out with your daughter quite a bit? Yeah. yeah. And you said earlier that He's not the type of guy that would you think would do anything like that. Yeah. When you were he's, living with him back in that time he's frame. He's odd and creepy, but I would never take what, him. What makes him odd and creepy? Just his mannerisms, his personality. Um, <clears throat> but I've known him for so long that you know I trust him. And so. When these young ladies were killed, you don't think he was around for any of that? I wouldn't think so. When we talk to him, is he going to have any inclination about what happened? I feel free to talk to him. Yeah. I'm still trying to ponder in my mind how your semen is with these women. Yeah, I'm and one. they end up dead. So back in 92, 93, when this happened, you were saying you had nothing to do with that. It's kind of hard for me to understand that and hard for That's me to believe. Hard for me to understand this, too. Well, How could your semen get with these women and then, then I end know. up dead? I don't Did know. somebody else I don't go know. dead? I don't know what happened. You, I can't even speculate what happened. Yeah, I just I, I can't get it through my head how your semen is there. Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. None of this you, stuff. You wouldn't have blacked out. No. You're saying that you, you didn't kill them. But yet, less than a year apart, these two ladies end up dead. And your semen is there. Just 
explain that to me. Hey. I have nothing on that. And to your knowledge, knowing Richard as or I keep calling him Richard for some reason. Randy, as you do, you Richard, tell me. Richard was the guy you know, I hung out with when I worked for Miller and Sons. That was James's son's name, Richard, his younger son. So nobody you've ever been with has attacked these women and killed them in front of you or with you or told you about it. You don't ever recall reading in no. the paper about it? No. I mean, these, these are very vicious killings. Well, I still need to think about it to try to explain this to you. I need someone to contact Randy. For? My daughter. Well, your daughter's been thinking. All about that. Let me go with a little thing that we talked to your ex-wife. She knows about my juvenile history. Miller's ex-wife originally believed that he spent time in juvenile detention for shoplifting. It wasn't until much later in the marriage that she learned about the stabbing incident, which only added to her fear. Okay, what does that have to do with Washington? Always... Washington? Well, the state of Washington, you know, I had a self-defense case. Tell, uh, tell me about that. Um, person came into where I worked, asked to use the phone, and he came out with me with a knife. There were no witnesses to the altercation between the woman and Miller, and it came down to their word alone. In light of everything that has come out during this interview, it is possible that he attacked her. And we had a struggle. She got cut, and I got arrested. Um, I was found not guilty and released. Okay, another little tidbit that she talked about, and you know, I'm going to ask for your explanation on this is that you got, you know, you said you just had normal sex with her. She's saying there's a little bit of bondage issues. We used to use rope. How would you use the rope? Miller also used knives and needles on his wife. Tie her up on the bed. Yeah. It's all consensual, though. Right, and then did what made her get tired? She mentioned that you, you started using a knife. What were you doing with the knife? Um, I don't even know how that started. Um, Is bondage what you consider normal sex, or? Bondage can be normal. You know, it's nothing unusual. Well, it's been going on for centuries. It's been going on for centuries, you know, and... But how did the knife play come into it? Honestly, I don't know. Um, it was terrifying. Um, but I think the reason why uh, we... It is because she really got off on it. Um, Why'd you guys split up? She had an affair. She, um, she was manager at McDonald's, and I was working at another McDonald's, and we had opposing schedules and. One of the guys she worked with, um, who she's now married to, um, they uh, were hanging out together a lot, and I didn't even 
think twice about it because, you know, I trusted her. And uh, I came home early one day and you know, she said that she wasn't feeling well. And so she wasn't going to go to church. She was going to um, the Nazarene church. And uh, so I left work early, came home, and she wasn't home. Uh, it's like, well, she said she wasn't going to go to church, and by now she would have been home unless they went out to lunch. But that wasn't the case. And so I thought about it for a while and thought about it. And I had his number. So I called it. And she answered. And she said, I'll be home in a little bit. And hours later, she showed up. And so we sat down on the bed. And said, just tell me what's going on. So she did. She went out on a date with him, and then she said, "You know, should I stay? Should I go?" And I said, "You need to go." Um, well, I excused myself for a moment, went outside, and you know, um, vented. Needed on the ground, came back in, and uh, she asked, you know, what about Sarah? And I said, well, she stays here. And so she left. Evidently, he was outside waiting for her. And uh, we got together a couple times after that. We went on a date after that even. And when my daughter got scared, her mom... Miller gained custody of his daughter by claiming that his ex-wife was homeless and had given their daughter mental trauma. That's when I filed the papers. Uh, well, her story, more along the lines, is that you got a little out of hand with the bondage and the knife thing. What were you doing with the knife to her? I would hold the, uh, the blunt and the blade up against her throat, you know, and uh, I would cut her clothes off for her. Um, and whenever we did it, you know, make sure you wear something that you don't care about. Um, don't want to ruin your good suit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd always ask her, you know, Okay with this, you know, want this? Yes. But I still don't get why she would say it got out of hand if she wanted it. Did you ever carve anything on her? Not carve. Um, we did bloodletting a couple times, and what's your definition of bloodletting? Um, like a little poke with a. I think it was an exacto knife. And um, so I did it a few times. And um, did we do any religious symbols like little crosses or anything? No. Any letters? No. Nothing like that. No. There were initials carved in Burnus's back, but it was never clear what they were supposed to represent. Another thing I asked you about a little bit earlier, too, was um, wearing, like, bathing suits or something like that. Um, any reason why Randy would say that you had, like, a bodysuit hanging around when you were at his apartment? Did you have a girlfriend that you had a bodysuit for? No. The only bodysuits I've had are, like, costume stuff. Do they look like women's bathing suits, or? No, they're all, like, solid color. Any turquoise ones? No. Green? I had a turquoise 
by turquoise bike. Do you ever have a diamond back bike? No. What kind of, you, you said you have a collection of bikes. What kind of bikes do you have at the house? Mongoose, an old, well, the replica of the Schwinn. That's a little kid's bike, and I've got Randy's bike there, which he hasn't used in a couple of years now. Well, I'm, I'm a little perplexed, Brian. Um, your wife's telling us that you murdered people in Washington, that you murdered people yeah. here. These two ladies are murdered. And your semen is with him. Does that seem like I'm kind of linking A to B or not? It seems like something's wrong. So what? what is it that's wrong? Did somebody Why? else kill these women and then you came along and got I, sexually excited by it? No. So how did your semen get there? I don't know. Well, you would have to know. It can only come from you. You've already explained the whole I've, DNA I've, thing. I've never killed anyone. You know, when I was a teenager, you know, I stabbed that woman. Right. You know, that haunted me for years. You know, it still, in a lot of ways, haunts me. Would it be coincidental that these women were stabbed? I personally don't like coincidence. I don't either. Well, is it odd that you stabbed a girl when you were 15 and then these ladies were stabbed? I think the hard part for me to believe is that my semen is with someone, well, two people that are dead. That's pretty strong evidence that places you with these women. And you can't explain that. And I don't even recall them. I don't know their names. You didn't have to know their names if you killed them. Which I did not do. Pardon? Which I did not do. It's your time to tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. because I was You have to know what happened. No. Your semen is there. That's the only, the only person that does know is you. Because that's the only way your semen... Could have been with these women. Your ex-wife saying that you get a bondage problems, they get a little bit out of hand. She's saying that you murdered people in Washington and here. Two women end up murdered here, are stabbed. You stabbed the lady when you were 15. You have a sexual diary that you wrote when you were sometime in Adobe or in a care home or halfway house with a lot of similar things going on that happen in these crimes. It makes it very hard for me to believe that you're not involved. So if something happened and something got out of hand, then I, you know, what's your side of the story? How, how could that have happened? It's been a long time. I mean, I think it's time you'll feel much better if you get something like that off your chest. Saint, Mar saint Maria even says she's the patron saint. And what about your fascination with Lenore? That's my daughter's fascination. That's your daughter's? Yes. That's not yours. She loves Lenore. Okay. She's got a black dress that she's worn since the time I was married. You know, she wanted to dress up as Wednesday Adams and this is, oh, it's a Lenore dress, too. But I had seen this video on YouTube, and it's like, Sarah, this girl's a lot like you. And uh, she saw the videos and just fell in love with it, you know, so. Well, don't you think it's fair to the families of these ladies that they know what happened? I think you do. You have a conscience. Yeah, I do have a conscience. That's why. And I think deep down, 
you need to talk to yourself, you know, explain to me what happened back then. Um, I am going to charge you with two murders, and you are going to go to jail later tonight after I finish the paperwork. Miller shows no shock over being charged with murder, an almost a pathetic attitude that he displays throughout his trial. And, and it's up to the court system. Okay, you need another water, need to go to the restroom, need a candy bar or anything. In 2022, Brian Miller was found guilty of both murders and was sentenced to death. And now he is serving his time on death row. He's suspected of having at least three more victims. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a Patreon link in the description where you can support the channel further. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.